A lot of people these days have been wondering how GBTC's price works and whether or not it tracks Bitcoin truly during Bitcoin's bull market cycle. And so what I've decided to do is, even though I have done a number of videos on GBTC, um, I tend to share the big picture um, rather than all of the small uh, bits um, that I have learned and that I've uh, found in tracking it in the previous cycle. And I just thought I would start out by saying that you have to understand that um, just because it did something before doesn't necessarily guarantee that it will do the same thing again. Um, the last time GBTC was the only game in town on the OTC markets and now uh, we have a number of other options. There are ETFs that are in the works if the SEC ever approves Bitcoin ETFs. And so all bets are off. Uh, there, there are no guarantees. However, I think that previous price action on GBTC uh, can show you or can give you a clue into the behavior of the price action. Now, this, is, this video is not intended to uh, try to reflect at all the extent of uh, to which the premium uh, does or doesn't affect price action, um, supply and demand. It doesn't take into account um, the management fees or anything like that. Um, I understand that those are uh, something to consider, um, but going off of price alone, um, taking a step back and looking at GBTC uh, just through price and uh, uh, will will help you um, to have the right mindset. Now, if you are uh, long-term investing, you're just buying and holding, and you're just going to enjoy the ride. If you are more active, if you're if you're trying to trade GBTC, um, if you are trying to find places to accumulate, if you're trying to look for price signals. Um, then maybe this video will help you to have a greater understanding of what's going on with GBTC um, look, by looking at the last cycle um, for context. Now I have this in log scale because it'll be a lot easier to see uh, in that form, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a series of object trees which will help you to understand from a bird's eye view and then a little bit, uh, a little bit more closely. Um, so when I make my videos, as you can see, some lines have popped up on the screen. When I make my videos on GBTC, I'm generally talking about uh, the long-term picture. And so these lines that you see are showing you the long-term picture uh, of GBTC's price action. And what I did this time is I started from the halving. Um, so it, right here, um, because a lot of people get confused, they'll see Bitcoin moving up in price action and GBTC will seem to underperform at times and then will seem to outperform at times. And so the question is why? Um, and generally uh, what you find is that there, there's a series of steps in, bit, in GBTC's price action, as you can see my mouse on the screen. And so what I did was I started at the halving, the price of the halving, and then went to the first near-term peak. So maybe if we zoom in a little over here, um, right around here, and I know the lines are not exact, but um, here we have a near-term peak. I define a near-term peak as uh, a place where price spikes up and then there's not anything close to that again for a period of time. So we've got this first near-term peak uh, which was only about a 28% gain uh, from the halving to the first peak. And then what you see is a long period of underperforming and consolidation. Um, this one was about 117 days. So that's, you know, that's over three months worth of time that GBTC was essentially sideways, down, uh, and whatnot. Right? So during this time, people probably were very frustrated if they were holding GBTC, seeing Bitcoin's price rising and or falling, and, and it just seemed like GBTC was not doing anything. It took forever. It took 117 days for it to reclaim its all-time high and then move on. But then you see in a matter of 24 days, you see it go up to uh, its next near-term peak, and then it sold down and came back up. So I started at this first little peak. So it took 24 days, it was a 272% move after it finally uh, regained its all-time high. 
and went into price discovery. And then you see this, uh, this next section was 77 days long, so over two months of once again sideways price action. And then a real quick move up about 91, 92%. And it took 21 days. So this last one took 24 days, this took 21 days. And then another long period, 85 days, almost three months of sideways action. And then finally, at the end of the cycle, about 25 days, the after regaining its all time high, it was a nearly 230% move to the top of the cycle. So that's the, that's the bird's eye view. And that's what I use when I am talking to people and making my videos about GBTC when I'm posting on Twitter about GBTC and its price action. So when it seems like GBTC has underperformed for a considerable amount of time, like remember the average here is at around three months, some a little under, some a bit over. Um, but it'll have those periods and then it'll have in a relatively short amount of time, three to three and a half weeks, it will have a nearly 100% or way more as you can see here with 272%. And then the other move was 229%. So that's the first thing you have to understand. But um, another way that we can look at it is with tracking the tops. Okay, so starting from the halving, Okay, so I've got uh, some labels here. It's a little bit more helpful. This first section from the halving to the first top was a 21% rise from the halving to the first peak. Okay, from this first peak to the second peak was 284% of a rise. From the second peak to the third peak, it was 87%. And from the third peak to the cycle top was 226%. So that's another uh, big picture view that you can use to understand uh, the way that GBTC's price action works. So if this doesn't make you feel better about your investment, uh, then maybe the, uh, again, these long-term lines, which help you to understand the length of time that it takes even just to regain the all-time high occurs. Uh, but then what I also did was I created um, an object tree tracking swing highs and swing lows. And it's obviously very busy, um, but as I run through this, this will kind of help you. Now I started uh, here, um, I don't know where this line went right here, but I started here uh, before the halving at this peak um, until the first uh, low, the first near term low, swing low um, after the halving. And it was a 48% drop from this peak to this low. Okay, and then like I said, I don't know where this line was. There was a line that was right there. Uh, but basically, from this low to this near-term peak was a 100% rise. And then after that, you had a 32% drop from this peak to this near-term low. Let me zoom in a little bit more for you all. Okay. Uh, so a 32% from this peak to this uh, to this low. From this low to, I have kind of a shorter term peak. Uh, you have a 160% rise from this low to the peak. Okay, and then a really quick, in a matter of two days, 31% drop. And then after that, you have it took 13 days for it to have a 206% rise. From this, near from this swing low to this peak. Then it gets kind of crazy. After this peak, we have a 54% drop. On uh, the 25th of May, it had a near-term peak uh, right around $6.20. And then in 53 days, it made it to its low, a 54.9% drop, where then it was down. Uh, it, its low here ended up at two dollars and seventy six cents so in terms of percentage a really big drop but then after that it had a three hundred and twenty one percent rise from this low to the peak and then another fifty five percent drop and then from this near-term low to the next peak a three hundred and two percent rise and then a real quick twenty nine percent drop and then to the top here a 160% rise. 
So hopefully that gives you uh, a little bit more context to the type of price action that you see uh, on GBTC during the cycle. It's not, uh, it's definitely uh, not something for the faint of heart. It's going to be really hard to trade. It's very unpredictable uh, when it's going to, uh, on the on these kind of shorter term uh, situations, it's a lot harder to figure out where the price is going. That's why for me, uh, keeping to kind of this these long-term views is a lot better. It's a lot better if you're buying, not financial advice, not investment advice. Um, it's a lot better if you just buy and hold if you're going to do it um, or to add on pullbacks if you have the capital to do it. Um, if you are uh, a little bit more ambitious and uh, you are looking to um, maybe swing trade this, be advised that it's not easy and that these price uh, changes, these price fluctuations uh, are, are very volatile. I mean, look at these numbers. I mean, I know we're not going day by day, but over, over spans of, uh, you know, a month, you know, a month or two months, we're getting 32% drops, 160% rises, 54% drops, 300% rises, and so on. Um, and so what does that ultimately mean? Uh, for our current cycle. Um, so as I quickly move over here to our uh, GBTC cycle um, or to our current cycle that we're in, uh, you have to keep it in context to that kind of price action. So as you can see, we've had a lot of volatility already. Um, I don't have all of my lines marked right now, uh, but you can see on screen that I have some of these, uh, I have these blue uh, horizontal lines which are basically marking uh, approximations of that type of price action. And as you can see, uh, if you just look in this range up here towards the top of the screen, we have a really long consolidation period that we've been in where price, it has made a new high uh, higher than right here, um, but it's basically been sideways. And it's been sideways since, uh, so this peak right here was, you know, oh, I'm, I got the little drawing tool in the way there. This little near-term peak was around January 8th of this year. So we're now at the end of April and uh, just, you know, looking at uh, price, that is 110 days. So even without looking at what Bitcoin's price action is, you can see that we're getting to the back end of that time where GBTC is going to recapture its all-time high and it's going to shoot up and remember those things take 21 to 27 days so we're looking at three to four weeks before Bitcoin could I'm sorry before GBTC could potentially go a, at least 80 to 90 percent and on a if it's a good move we could see it go 150 to 200 percent and so that's something you have to uh, you have to be aware of Okay, so that's uh, a little bit of a deeper understanding of GBTC's price action according to the previous cycle. Um, hopefully uh, it was helpful, hopefully, hopefully you learned something. Um, so if you liked the content here, go ahead and like and subscribe and share it with somebody uh, who you think would find it helpful. Thanks guys, have a great day.